Aloha, my name is Sunny Savage of Savage Kitchen and I'm coming at you from the island of Maui, Hawaii. And this week is Hawaii's Invasive Species Awareness Week. So I really wanted to uh, put out a couple of videos since my food truck is not open right now as I await a contract for a permanent location in Wailuku. Um, so today I wanted to focus on this plant that you can see kind of uh, taking up this uh, lo'i here in the background and it's called false ava. Piper auritum is its scientific botanical name uh, and another name for this plant is called root beer plant because one of the easiest ways to identify it and um, kind of make sure you've got this not the true ava or kava kava is by crushing the leaf and smelling it and you're going to instantly smell this delicious root beer kind of quality. The plant has a lot of saffron in it. And so this has been used for millennia where it originates, where, it, where its home mother country is in um, the Yucatan. And it's used as food and medicine. So a lot of times I'll uh, take the leaf and put some fish or other type of ingredients inside, wrap it up and steam, and then you can eat that outer leaf or choose not to. I've also made green mole out of the ground up leaves. Uh, I've candied the flowers, are absolutely delicious. Uh, it's also a wonderful plant to distill and use the hydrosol of. Uh, so anyways, I just kind of wanted to touch on, um, this, this plant is highlighted by the Maui Invasive Species Council, it's on their hit list, and it is an aggressive plant. I have been working with this plant, um, I lived in Haiku for eight years, and it was one that I was always working to pull up and eat as much as I could have, because it um, really establishes itself and it's very difficult to remove. So I wanted to kind of introduce this concept of not thinking of our invasives as like having a war on invasives, but rather looking at them as abundant resources that are available for us to utilize. These are the plants that are found in greatest abundance and I think we can look to you know pretty much every indigenous culture around the globe has always taken the resources that were found in most abundance and utilize them so um, I've been reading this wonderful book called the war or beyond the war beyond the war on invasive species by Tao Orion and it's uh, a really paradigm shifting look at how to work with invasives rather than to you know use the chemical approach to conservation and um, management practices and one of the really wonderful things uh, that kind of stood out for me in this book was um, and this book was published in 2015, so she was taking uh, some data from 2006 through 2000, probably 14. And what it says is in here, this is a, a quote um, with a reference, the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii has received over $130,000 from the Monsanto Fund since 2006 for watershed restoration efforts on Molokai. So that is the use of chemical in our watersheds to control invasive species. And I'm coming at you today from the beautiful sacred Iao Valley, which is one of, you know, this is, this is our water. This is our beautiful water here on Maui. And, you know, I just spoke with the groundskeepers to really confirm that they are using herbicide to control these plants. And 
most people in the conservation field and beyond typically think of chemical as a necessary evil. And I'd really like to shift that idea because the use of these chemicals is actually leading to more biodiversity loss. You know, it's killing all life. It's, it's not just killing those plants. It's killing the bacteria. It's killing the insects. It's killing, you know, so many things. And that trickles down into our watershed. And so, um, you know, there's a better way. There's a better way to do this. And part of that approach is treating our invasives as abundant resources. So I would really encourage anyone to, um, everyone, to have a look at this book, Beyond the War on Invasive Species. So hope you're having a beautiful day and much aloha, St. Louis.